Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. A few months ago, I put out a video about these young new LYN360 lights recommending barbers and hairstylists pick one or two of them up for the salon. And since then, I've gotten a lot of messages from people saying like, hey, I got that light you recommended. How do I use it? The thing is, it's not like the simplest thing to explain. It's a lot easier to like show you. I found a couple tricks along the way here as far as like implementing these lights to to really get a grasp on what they can do, um, and I'm not just talking about these lights, this is any lights, um, and even if you're not adding lights, like if you're just taking photos, by understanding your exposure a little bit better, which is what we're gonna talk about, you're going to be able to take better photos. So in this demonstration, I'm going to be using my iPhone 13 because that's what I have and that's what I use often, but this works with a mirrorless or DSLR camera as well. Now, if you do have a camera like that, some fancy Canon or Nikon or Sony or something, the very first thing you should do if you haven't done it already is go look for videos about the exposure triangle and learn how to shoot in manual mode. If you haven't done that yet, that's like step number one. But shooting with the iPhone, we don't need to know about any of those details, like our exposure just changes on the slider here. So let's talk about what exposure is real quick. Essentially, the exposure is how bright or dark the, the camera decides to make the image. Depending on the light in the room, the camera is going to be doing all kinds of stuff inside of there, adjusting settings automatically to give you a proper exposure, meaning nothing is too bright and nothing is too dark. It's trying to land right in the middle to where like these white bricks behind my model, they're not gonna be so white that you can't see what's going on there. And like the dark side of the head here is not gonna be so dark that you can't see what's going on there. The camera is trying to adjust how bright it's making that image to sit right in the middle there. And that's essentially what you'll typically get with an automatic exposure. When we control our exposure, what we're going to do is make the image brighter or darker in camera. And one way we can do that is by tapping the image, tapping the thing we wanna focus on, and then we can slide this little sundial upward if we wanna make the image brighter. And if you go too bright, you lose detail in the brightest parts of the picture. And then again, if you tap on it and you slide the sun downward, you're gonna make the image darker. But if you go too dark, you're gonna lose detail in the darkest parts of the image. So you don't always want what the camera is automatically about to give you. Sometimes you wanna go brighter, sometimes you wanna go darker. And if you want a better understanding of when you wanna overexpose or underexpose, again, go brighter or darker. I have another video that's about histograms and tone curves. And if you understand that, then this makes so much more sense. I'll put a link in the description to that video, but it's like 10 minutes of really easy to digest information about what the camera is actually reading while you do change the exposure. Anyways, with all that said, one of the things that makes adding lighting so confusing and so difficult is the iPhone, and if you're shooting with a, a DSLR mirrorless camera in any kind of priority mode or automatic, they'll be doing this as well. But any camera that's gonna be automatically adjusting the exposure is going to be changing its settings internally to try to compensate for whatever light is added or removed to the scene. And so a lot of people I talk to, they're like, hey, I, brought, I bought that light you recommended and everything just looks weird with it. I, can't, I don't understand what it's supposed to be doing. And it's completely understandable. If I take this head here and I blast a bright light at it, if you look at the, uh, the screen on the phone here, it's completely changing the picture and probably not in a way you would expect it to. If we look at this dark shaded side of the face here, when I turn off the light, that becomes brighter. The camera will adjust to the scene and it'll brighten the exposure and I can actually see more of the face if I don't have a light. And then again, when I turn the light on, if we look at the bricks around the, the background, around the outside of the head, those are gonna get darker as the light goes on. Because this light is so bright that the camera is going, whoa, whoa, that's bright. Let's darken the exposure. Let's globally make the entire image darker so that this area with the light on it is not too bright. And by doing that, the shadows get darker, the background gets darker, everything gets darker. So it can be really hard to understand where to put that and how to use it and why to use it. So let me show you a trick here. We're gonna lock the exposure. If I take this face here and I long press on it, it's gonna say at the top of the screen, AEAF lock. That's auto exposure, autofocus lock. At this point, the exposure is not going to change. So even if I turn on a light or the light changes, the exposure is not gonna to change to compensate for that. It doesn't make anything brighter or darker. It just, it locked it. And because of that, I can actually now figure out how much of this light to put in here. So if I have none of this light on and I'm looking at the image, I might feel like maybe it's a little dark on this side because all my lights in the room are on that side of the room coming this way. And so I might wanna just dial in a little bit of this light because the exposure is locked. As I change this now, 
I can see exactly what it's doing to the image and I can see how much of it I want in there. And so if I feel like that looks good and I'm at six out of 99 over here, maybe that's the picture I want. It helped me drastically to figure out how much of this light to put in there. I'll show you one more example of that and hopefully it'll make it more tangible and practical and make it stick a little bit better. So let's just say, for example, you're shooting in front of a dark background, a black wall or something. And let's just say that I can't control these lights here because I'm in a salon, I can't just turn off the lights to take a picture. If I'm looking in the camera here, the way that it's automatically exposing everything, my black paper doesn't look like deep dark blackness like I want it to. It looks like a black paper. It even looks kind of like a gray paper because the camera's auto, ex auto exposure doesn't want anything to be so dark that you can't tell what it is. So one way I like to think of exposure, especially if I'm locking it in on the iPhone here, is I'm gonna control the light in the room that I can't control in real life, or I'm gonna control the sun because I can't control the sun in real life. So what I wanna do here is I wanna take the light off of that background. So what I'm gonna do is long press on the face, slide the exposure down until that black paper just turns into solid blackness, just deep dark black. And as I do that, I'm making a global adjustment to the image, and so now my face is too dark as well. And once I've done that, I can come back here with my lights and figure out how much light I want to put on here to get the exposure I want. Now, you will see, after taking these couple of steps to lock the exposure, slide down the exposure, to turn down the lights in the room that I can't turn down, and then to add new lights to taste based on that locked exposure, if I unlock the exposure, everything's gonna go wacky again. The head's actually too bright, and now I can see a whole bunch of the uh, paper in the background again. It's not a clean, dark, deep background like I want. Now, granted, this whole process, locking the exposure, dialing in the lights to taste, I don't do that every time I shoot. If I was gonna shoot this, I wouldn't lock the exposure. I would just come in here and know that if these lights are brighter than those lights up there, that I could just do a quick exposure adjustment like this and get the shot. But as far as learning where to put the lights, how bright to put the light, by locking the exposure and then controlling and looking at how bright do you want the ambient light and then figuring out how bright to make your added other lights and controlling the lights that you can control in real life after you've controlled the lights you can't control in real life in camera, if you do that, you will learn all of this so, so much faster. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Um, like and subscribe if you're into this sort of thing. I, lately I've been apologizing in every video for being rusty and sketchy because I haven't been doing this a lot lately and like I'm not really in practice, but this has been coming up a lot lately for, for me, so I wanted to put this video out there to kind of break it down.